All right, we're going to be working on exercise seven in chapter three in this video. And I'm going to jump over to the book real quick and read the description. All right, exercise seven says uh, there are 2.5 centimeters in an inch and there are 3.7854 liters in a U.S. gallon. Those are things you guys just remember, I'm sure. Uh, probably not, but those are the conversion uh, numbers. Create a class named metric conversion. Its main method accepts an integer value from the user at the keyboard. So we're not doing it in two parts like some of the other exercises. The scanner is going to be there right from the get-go. Right? They're kind of figuring that you kind of get the feel of it now. So we're going to put the scanner in right away to grab the value. And in turn, that passes the entered value to two methods. One converts the value from inches to centimeters and the other converts the same value from gallons to liters. Each method displays the results with appropriate explanation. Save the application as metricconversion.java. All right, I'm going to jump over to Eclipse, where I already have a, a Chapter 3 exercises uh, going. And I'm going to right-click, uh, actually, the source folder, and then I'm going to choose a new class. I'm going to name that metric conversion. I am going to add a main method, and then I'm going to click Finish. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the uh, automatic comments. Since we know right off the bat that we're going to get input from the user, let's go ahead and just add the scanner immediately. So I'm just going to type scanner. I wait a second, let it underline, I leave the cursor right at the end of the word. I hold down control and then press the space bar and eclipse. It automatically adds my library. I'm going to call my scanner input and then call the constructor function, which is new scanner. And we get that from system.in. And then we put a semicolon at the end. All right, so that business is out of the way. The other thing that we notice from the problem description, it says there are 2.5 centimeters, 2.54 centimeters in an inch. These numbers seem like what? Constants, right? These are values that aren't going to change, but numbers that we're going to need to do our work. So it might be really logical to actually create those uh, in that capacity. So why don't we go ahead and jump back over to our code. And I'm actually going to put these constants above the scanner. So right here I'm going to type in final. And that is centimeters in an inch. So I'm going to call this and what kind of value is this going to be? This is going to be a double, right? So I'm going to call it cent underscore in underscore inch. All caps, because that's the convention for constants. The number is 2.54 equals 2.54. Very much the same way. I'll do another final. That's a double. This one is liters in a gallon. Liters in gallon. That number is 3.7854. 3.7854. OK. All right, so the, the next thing that we're going to need to do is let's go back to the problem description and take a look. 
All right, it says create a class named metric conversion. That's the, what we did. That's the name of the program. Uh, we got the main method. We got the user input from the keyboard. And then we're going to pass those values. So we're just going to accept one integer value. You guys noticing that? So we need to create an integer variable. What I'm going to show you here is kind of like a stepped up technique too for the integer. Now normally what you guys would probably think is let's create integer and call it you know num which is something we get from the user and at this point I wouldn't even need to, to declare a value because I'm going to get it from the user and you can do that. But what I'm going to do here is instead of declaring it up there I'm actually going to uh, do my system out. I'm going to prompt my user so let's do that first. System out dot print and we're going to say please enter an integer just like that okay so I've, I've got the prompt here now let's go ahead and I'm going to declare my variable and grab the value in one fell swoop. And we're doing it since this is an int, we're going to say next int. Now, do you have to do it that way? No, but what you will discover with a lot of programmers is over time, they just kind of get into that workflow, right? It's like, oh, I'm grabbing something from the keyboard. I'll just declare the variable right when I'm grabbing it from the keyboard rather than think about it in advance, right? Is it wrong? No, no, it's, it's absolutely uh, an efficient way to do it. In fact, I would argue it's a little bit more efficient way uh, to write the code. All right, let's go back over to the description one more time. And notice that after we get the, use, the value from the keyboard, we're going to pass it to two methods. One converts from inches to centimeters, other converts from gallons to liters. So I'm going to say maybe a good name for the methods is to, to be uh, exactly what they're doing, right? Because that way when you look at the code you would know. So I would say that let's do the first one. We're going to convert from inches to centimeters. So I'm not actually going to write the method first. I'm actually going to write the call to it first. I'm going to, up here I'm going to say convert inches to centimeters. And I'm going to put parentheses after it. And will I pass it a number? Absolutely, because we're getting one from the keyboard, right? So what are we going to pass it? We're going to pass it a num. Right? The other method we're going to write is going to be called convert gallons to liters. And just to make sure I'm doing that in the right direction. Because what, what if it's converting liters to gallons? You see the difference? So that's why I'm coming back here. One converts from inches to centimeters. The other converts the same from gallons to liters. So am I doing it the right way? Because why? Because the math might be different if, if I'm going one direction or the other. But with the information that we're given, uh, that's what we have to work with. Now, since I know I'm not going to write this one right away, I'm going to put two slashes in front of it to comment it out. But with this one here, Notice that it recognizes that we haven't created it yet. So I just hover, come down here, hit the, the quick fix, and it automatically creates the method for us. Now the author has been teaching us to create public methods, which is really what I would typically do too. But Eclipse automatically creates privates. That's OK, you guys. It doesn't matter. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, do a couple of little tweaks here. The one thing that I want to do first 
is I'm not really comfortable with naming the stuff that I pass so that it's the same name as the variable from where it came. Because the truth is they're not the same thing. Uh, and I, I don't consider it really good habit. So I always wonder why Eclipse kind of does that as an automatic. It, I think for me, it would be better to make more sense. Because if we're going to convert from inches to centimeters, what are we actually sending to it? Inches. You see, see my thinking? Because that way when I'm working with the code inside of here, it'll make more sense to me what I'm actually working with. So I'm going to just call it inches. And notice all lowercase. Because I want to make sure I'm consistent with that. Now I will have to convert to centimeters. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create a double in here, not to give it a value yet, to hold the result of my math. All right, now I'm running into a little bit of a conundrum. And here's my conundrum. Great. The conversion amounts that I need to work with, well, oh shoot, I put I put the the constants up here, and if I do the math down here and call this constant, will it work? No. And they will not communicate with each other because this is inside of one set of curly brackets, and this is inside a separate set of curly brackets. So really what I need to do is I need to take that constant that I created, and I actually need to bring that down here and use it here. The other option, and this is something that's interesting to know, is I could pull that out and put it outside both methods and put it up here in between. So it's not in the main method, it's not in the other method, and then it becomes a global that's accessible by all of them. I could do that. But the reality is, is I won't need to use it anywhere but inside this method, so why put it there? Okay, that's the thinking. All right, so I, this is where I'm putting it. So now I'm going to actually do the math. So I'm going to say centimeters and we just take our inches and then we multiply by that cent in inch. That's all the math. And then we're going to do a little bit of output and we're going to say Oops, system, let's get rid of that line, system, dot out, dot print line, and what are we going to say? Well, we're passing in the inches, so I'm going to say whatever the, the inches are that we passed in, I'm going to define them as inches, so like if I type in 10 inches is... whatever the result of our math is, centimeters. So 10 inches is 25.4 centimeters, right? That's what it should work out to be. And then I, I will say centimeters because those are the words we want up on the screen, just like that. All right. At this point, I want to make sure that works before I go any further, before I try to do the other method. So let's get this to work first. So I'm going to hit play on this. All right, please enter an integer. We'll use a really simple number. I'm going to put 10. 10 inches is 25.4 centimeters. Okay, that, that's good. Everybody agrees? Okay. Now the other thing that we have to do is write this method. convert gallons to liters. Notice how it's underlining again. I'm just going to use the automatic tools to help me out here. Why not, is my thinking. So it created the method for me. The thing that I'm going to do, though, just like I did down here, is what are we at really sending in? We're sending in the number of gallons. So I'm going to call this gallons. And then, you know what? I'm just going to kind of follow the same pattern. So I will create a double to hold the answer. And I'm going to call that what? Leaders? I'm going to also grab this 
constant that I created up here and put it down here where I'm going to use it. And then, just like I did below, I'm going to take my liters equals the gallons I'm sending in, and I'm multiplying that against liters in gallon, just like that. And then I'm just going to write a nice message here. I'm going to get rid of some of this extra space in my program. We're just going to do system, that out, that print line. And once again, I'm going to, the number we sent in, gallons, G A L N O S, And hopefully, if we did that all correctly, we should be OK. So let's go ahead and test it. So it saved it. And now I'm going to hit uh, the Run button here. Please enter an integer. I'm going to type in 10 again. And now you can see it does two pieces of output. 10 inches is 25.4 centimeters, 10 gallons is 37.854 liters. And I chose, you know, I chose the number 10 on purpose because that's easy to multiply. You're just, you know, you're just moving the decimal place. Um, and then once you put in a number that you're pretty sure you know what the answer and that the answer is correct, um, then you can try trickier numbers to really figure it out. All right. So, folks, this is... Uh, the entirety of exercise 7 in chapter 3. I'm going to scroll to the top of the screen here so you guys can, can see the whole thing. So this is the top part of the program. In the main method, we set up our scanner, prompted the user for a number, stored that number. Then we called two methods, one converting from inches to centimeters, one converting from gallons to liters, sending the same number to both. And then the two methods are shown below. Notice the two methods are not inside the main method. They're inside the class file. So they're inside this whole structure, but they're not inside the main method. They, they are both standalone. Uh, the author demonstrates most of that, the methods being created as public. I use the automatic tools in Eclipse. It set them up as privates. It doesn't really matter because I don't plan on using them externally. Public or private is fairly irrelevant here. All right, folks, that's the completion of Exercise 7 in Chapter 3.